If you're on the exciting journey of launching a startup, chances are securing funding is high on your to-do list. The sea of funding options out there can easily be overwhelming. So how do you sift through it all to find the perfect fit for your unique business needs? Well, that's exactly what we're talking about in today's video. Now, before we get started, go ahead and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest tips and tricks that are gonna help you grow and succeed in your business. Now, today we're discussing some of the most popular startup funding options and taking a look at the pros and cons so you can gather all the information you need to pick the best option for your business. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a short checklist that any entrepreneur in any industry can use to make sure you're making the best funding decision. So make sure that you stick with me. Now, let's go ahead and jump into some of these startup funding options that you could be taking advantage of. So first of all, let's define some terms. What is startup funding? That is the money that an entrepreneur uses to launch a new business. So what are the different types of startup funding? Well, first of all, let's start with SBA microloans. So startups can actually get capital from private and nonprofit lenders if they don't qualify for a typical business loan. A loan is usually secured by collateral or assets that the business plans to purchase with the financing. However, the SBA partially backs the loan, guaranteeing the lender that they're gonna pay back a percentage of the loan if the borrower happens to default. This lessens the risk for the lender, resulting in better terms and interest rates than traditional loans. Typically, these prioritize minorities or underserved small businesses like women-owned businesses or veteran-owned businesses, and microloans tend to have more favorable terms. Interest rates vary from eight to 13% as of this recording, and term lengths can usually be at or under about 10 years. Now, microloans can lend up to $50,000, but according to the SBA, the average microloan is about 13 grand. Now, microloans can be used for working capital, inventory, supplies, furniture, fixtures, equipment, etc. It cannot be used to pay existing debt or purchase real estate. Now, you do have the option of traditional business loans as well. These are typically provided by a financial institution, a bank, a credit union, and lenders give you a lump sum of money that you have to pay back over a fixed period of time. Now, repayment terms can be up to 10 years, and loan amounts vary from $5,000 all the way up to a million. Now, and of course, interest rates vary as of this recording to be anywhere from 6% to all the way to 36%. Now, interest and fees are included and vary depending on your credit score and the lender that you're borrowing from. And these loans are not backed by the government, so there's more risk for the lender if the borrower defaults on the loan. So as a result, these loans require higher credit scores, stronger financials, and an established track record as a business owner. And you may be asked to disclose what your intentions for the funds are. And for some business owners, that may be a deal breaker. You've also got the option of venture capital. Now, venture capital is a form of private capital that investors provide to startup businesses that they believe have long-term growth potential. This type of startup capital usually comes from investors, investment banks, and other financial institutions. But unlike a traditional loan, companies don't need to show cash flow or assets to secure this funding. Venture capitalists may also offer mentoring or networking opportunities to help the company grow and secure that top notch talent out there. Now there's a significant amount of risk for the investor since if the business doesn't succeed, they're not gonna see a return on any of their money. So as a result, venture capitalists typically want at least a seat on the board of the directors of the businesses that they finance. Some may even want partial ownership of your company, anywhere from 25 to 50%. So you may lose creative control of your business as any ideas are gonna have to be run by that investor. Now you've also got the option of business credit cards. Now business credit cards are a great tool for startups. They give you access to large amounts of funding at 0% interest from anywhere from six to 24 months, depending on the card that you're going for. You can typically get unlimited access to business credit if you continue showing the banks that you have a need for the funding and show aggressive repayment to them. Now with funding growth specifically, we've worked with startups that only needed $20,000 to really get going. But we've also worked with ones that needed like $250,000 to get started. And some of those higher amounts that we talk about can sometimes be scary for startup businesses. You may look at $250,000 and go, wow, when am I ever gonna be able to pay that back? But unlike traditional loans, you're only paying back whatever amount you use compared to how much you've been approved for. So if you get approved for $50,000, but you only need to use 30,000 to get your business up and running, that's all you gotta spend and pay back. You don't have to use all 50,000 that you were necessarily approved for. 
And in addition, you don't have to disclose to the lenders what you plan to buy with the credit. Now, obviously you wanna spend it on business related stuff, but you don't have to be that specific upfront. Also keep in mind that business credit can be used for any industry, including real estate. And you know, quick shout out to the payment processing services that allow that to be possible. You know, if you're trying to run a credit card and use it as a down payment or use it as cash, places like Plastique or Bill.com or Bluevine all allow you to do that uh, a lot more efficiently without having to do like a cash advance or something like that. Also with business credit, you get cash back and rewards, which is not offered with any other option out there. An SBA loan is not gonna give you rewards for paying it back on time. They're just gonna stop calling you and stop bugging you. And there's also no collateral or giving up equity in your company. Now, most startups won't even think to go after business credit because often it's linked to being established for a few years or you can show financials, but that's actually just a common misconception. If you wanna learn more about how to get access to the business credit that you need, whether it be 20,000 or 250,000, I've actually linked our masterclass to the description below so you can go check that out right now. Another option for funding for startups is crowdfunding. That's when an entrepreneur raises money, usually through an online campaign for their business. And there are typically four Four types of crowdfunding. There's donation, when people give a company money for nothing in return. Uh, GoFundMe is an example of a donation-based crowdfunding platform where people can donate towards your cause or business's success without getting anything in return. There's debt, which in this case, the money given by peers must be repaid with interest by a certain date or deadline. Uh, there's rewards, when a donor receives something in return for donating. The reward size is usually dependent on the amount that's been contributed. Uh, and equity. While most crowdfunding opportunities don't allow backers to own a portion of the company they're contributing to, there are some platforms that will allow small businesses to give a portion of the business to the contributors. And typically, participants will receive a certain number of shares in the company based on how much they contribute monetarily. Now, most crowdfunding platforms have specific rules you've got to adhere to, such as not offering equity crowdfunding or a list of prohibited items that you can't have in your project. Like Kickstarter, for example, is a crowdfunding platform that prohibits any item that claims to diagnose or cure an illness or political fundraising, along with other rules that have to be followed. So the question becomes, how do you know which type of startup funding is right for your business? One of the biggest factors to think about is how much funding do you need? That's gonna push you in the right direction. Consider what you're gonna use the funding for. You don't wanna pursue an option that restricts use on the purpose that you specifically needed to get the funding for. How much control over your business are you willing to give up? If you don't wanna give up any equity or creative control, that also helps you steer clear of any methods that make you do so in exchange for funding. How much interest are you willing to pay? Answering these questions will help you immediately cross out some of the options that we talked about today and point you in the right direction. Whew, that was a lot of information to cover. I hope you guys now have a better understanding of the different funding options available for startups and how to pick the best one for your business. Now remember, it's important to weigh both the pros and cons when choosing a funding option for your startup because there is no one size fits all approach. Each business is different and has its own needs. So if you have any questions or topics that you want us to cover, drop them in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Zach Ritchie from Fund and Grow, and I'll see you in the next video.